How's everybody doing tonight? All right, all right. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but it's been a rough, tough week. The devil's been at it. No, in case you didn't know, the devil is real. And his mission is to kill, steal, and destroy. But God's grace and mercy is always sufficient. His love covers a multitude of sin, and he's a good, good God. Tonight we're talking about integrity. I'd like to, uh, first of all, start with the praise report. My dad, those of you who know, my dad has uh, been diagnosed with throat cancer, and he had cancer. Um, he had it removed. Well, he had the surgery, you know, to, to work on the tumor, and he's been taking um, liquid chemo. Where they go, he goes and sits for like five hours to this machine, and they pump chemo, whatever it is, liquid through him. And, uh, man, half the time he falls asleep. He's almost lost all his hair. But a praise report, my mom said they went last week to the doctor, and the tumor has shrunk. It was 3.4 or 3.3 by 3 point something. It's now, uh, it's not growing, number one. And number two, it's 1.2 by 1.3. So it has shrunk nearly half the size and has not spread. So all glory to God. It might be a, 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 an amazing miracle testimony in all that. Hey, Miss Judy online, all of those online, we'd like to welcome you and thank you also for joining. I saw Daniel from Lafayette was on there. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Um, we got Mike. We got um, Sister Thomasina. And we got Brother Byron with us on the power panel tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The powerhouse. You know, again, just want to thank God for this opportunity. And let's just pray. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for another awesome opportunity to come into your house, Lord God, the house of prayer, the house of worship. We thank you for the praise and worship, Lord, that just ushers your spirit in and your presence. God, and we just ask right now that you would send the Holy Spirit to manifest in this place, Lord God, that you'd you'd uh, anoint these words, Lord God. Let it not be us speaking, but the Holy Spirit speaking through us, Father God, that you would use us as merely vessels, as messengers just to, to testify and to glorify your name, Lord, and, and through your word and through the things that you've done for our, our, us in our life, through the experiences of the Jesus experience that we have with you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Who thinks integrity is uh, a big deal? <laughs> Pretty big deal, huh? For those of you who don't know what integrity is, the definition of integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles and sticking to them. Amen. Not only having them, but sticking to them, because you can say you got them. <laughs> I can say I got all kinds of stuff. I can say I got a million dollars in the bank, but my bank account's going to say something different. When I go to show you that thing, you say, well, that's not a million dollars. That's not what you said. It also means being, being willing to do what's right when nobody's looking. That's, that's the definition to me. That's the true definition. Doing what's right when nobody's looking because it's easy to, to do what's right when everybody, you know. When it, but somebody's always looking. Come on, brother. Come on. <laughs> that's right. Once I got that revelation, I couldn't help but try to walk with integrity and, and upright. Um, you know, some, some scriptures that, that I pulled out, just a couple that spoke to me. Number one, well, about some characters. How about Joseph? about Joseph in the Bible? Man with integrity. And he shows, he's a perfect example to us that when you keep integrity, especially when you're being persecuted, when you're being falsely accused, when you're being all these things, just the favor that the hand of God, the love of God has upon you and will just follow you through every circumstance and situation. I just think Joseph's a, a mighty man of integrity yes, there. You got something, Thomasina? It's ready to go. And now the Hello, hello. <laughs> Another person in the Bible sure. that really had integrity is the one that went to the sure. cross and died on oh, Calvary yeah. for us. And the word of God says that we should imitate Jesus as he imitate the Father. Therefore, we shall walk in the Spirit. Because the Word of God says, you will know His by the love that we share. Right. Therefore, what we should exemplify is the fruit of the Spirit, 
which Jesus has given us. And if we obey the word of God, the word of God is the only thing that's going to keep us Come on. walking in the spirit of integrity. Come on. It keep us honest. It keep us with our right mind. It keep us slow to speak, slow to anger, but quick to listen. And if we exemplify some of these characteristics, we are walking in the spirit of integrity. We can't be one way today and another way tomorrow. Even when we're out in the shopping mall, sometimes we get impatient when the cash register line is not moving too fast. We get the cursing, we get the bucking, and we get the saying everything and join in to what your neighbor is saying instead of what we should do. Think of a good word that we can encourage those people because that's a spirit of integrity. Even at your house, how you handle your kids, Mm. Like he said, nobody knows. God knows everything. He sees everything. He is Jehovah El El Roy, the God that sits high, yet he looks low, but he knows everything that we do. So whatever we do, we always should walk in a spirit of integrity, whether someone knows us or not, because the walk that we exemplify, a total strange record, is something strange about that person. They may not know what it is, but it's God's anointed penetrating from the inside to the outside. And see, it's the anointed of God that changes people, that deliver them, that set them free. Amen. Amen. You know, you said something real important there about what, the, uh, what somebody else sees. You know, why? one reason why it's very important that we always walk in integrity is because not only that God's God's watching and it's, it's it's what we should do, but we may be the only Jesus that somebody sees. We may be the only Jesus that somebody may have a chance to we witness to, or them not even not even have the opportunity to talk to him, but just him see how we walk and see how we talk and see how we act and see the way we live. And if we're not exemplifying Christ with integrity, with the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we handle our business. We may be ruining our witness for that one person that this might be the only opportunity they have to see what we have, which is Jesus, and want to get some of it. And another thing, too, we can't say, well, you don't understand. Because you look at the word of God, sometimes the devil tempts us when we are most vulnerable. Because after Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, came down, who was waiting on him? The devil. And guess what he's trying to tempt? The word with the word himself. Mm. He said, if you be the man, turn these stones into bread. What did Jesus say? Man should not, not, live, man by should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, in order for the mouth, the, the word to come out, it has to be in deposit in our inner man, which is our heart, the real us. Come on. So if we don't have nothing deposit within us, it's just like you having money in the bank. No money in the bank. <laughs> and your house about to go into foreclosure. Uh -oh. And if you don't know that you have the money in it to pay that note, guess what? Did you see the sheriff putting your stuff on the outside? <laughs> so that's how the devil, if you don't know the word to combat the devil, he going to beat you down. Come on. So you have to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. And when the devil tell you that you, what you are not, you let him know what Jesus said you are. That's right. So you don't bow to the enemy at all. When you walk in that spirit of integrity, the doctor might give you one hour to live. But what did God say about that? Always check in with what the Father say about that. If you are lacking, you remind, walk in the spirit of integrity still. You can let the enemy know, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. When the enemy come up, you can let him know, no weapon foam against me. You might foam, but you're not going to prosper. Right. Come on. So you have to know the word of God. You have to fill your heart, the real you, with the word of God and be able to come back the enemy at all times. Because the devil is not playing with us. He's always on his job. But we being Christian, sometimes we are lacking in a lot of ways. And guess what? That's the spirit of integrity. Mm. Amen. Amen, amen.
Amen. Anybody, somebody, anybody. Well, uh, man, that's a lot. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, I kind of wrote a little note on it. You know, our personal integrity is, is essential, but alone, but alone, no match for Satan on our own power. That's it. You know, so uh, ultimately it's God's grace and redemption, redemption of our hearts that keeps us from falling. Like in Ezekiel 36, 26, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit, the Holy Spirit. Come on. Without that, we're, we're, I know a lot of people, I know men that in, in business that I would, on a phone call, do a $100,000 job, but they don't even profess Christ. Mm. But in business, they have integrity. So they do have integrity in the world. But that's not enough. No, sir. We have to have integrity. It's completeness. It's wholeness. It's soundness in, in the word of God. In our faith and our seeking out the truth and the knowledge in God's word. And all of that working together. Come on. And then, of course, we're going to be honest. If we're walking in love, strong moral principles, truthfulness, righteousness, faithfulness, all of these things will be complete. Because... You know, thinking about Christ is integrity. That's right. I mean, it's just, there you go. I mean, you just, you can sum it up through him. And uh, yeah, it just couldn't be enough. Thank God for the grace of God. I mean, it's just <laughs> that we can have integrity, that a person like a, a sinner that, that can, can be redeemed and, and live a life of integrity again, or not even again, never did have it. And then through Christ Jesus. Amen. Here I am. Amen. Amen. Uh, I thank God for integrity, y'all. Let's pick it back what the woman of God said. You know, in Genesis, uh, you know, they, they were having a meeting. You know, the text says that they said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And you know that uh, us comes from the Hebrew word Elohim, which means plural. That were more than one. That we're in a discussion. And who was the subject of the discussion? We were. Mm. They was discussing us. Come on. You see, uh, uh, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Uh, even many believe that the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, right? Mm. The text says, he said, let this mind be in you. That is in Christ Jesus. Which was also... Mm. In Christ Jesus. Come on. You see, what are you saying? Let me help you out. Just like our shadow is a reflection of us, how many of you know our actions, our lifestyles, should be a reflection of, of what's on the inside of us? Amen. Right? Come on. Now, integrity. Can I just read that again? Please. Integrity is defined as the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles that you refuse to change. Come on. It's like when you set boundaries and you refuse to cross those boundaries. Amen. My flesh want to do it, but I can't do it. Why? Because I'm handcuffed by integrity. Come on, amen. amen. Integrity has to handcuff amen. something. That's I good. can't do it. That's right. You understand? That's good. And how do you know? Integrity, it is the fruit of good character. Right. Integrity, it is what? It is a character trait, right? Now, how do we define character? Because they, they go in hand. Amen. Character is what? The it's who we are, right? right? right. Character is our identification tag. Character distinguishes and defines who we really are. That's right. Reputation is what others, other people think about you, right. but character is who you really, are. Who you really are. Come on. Yes. yes. Character is what we do when there is no audience. That's right. Character is what we do when there's nobody in the room yes. but us. That's character. It's doing what is right just because it's right. Amen. Yes. When there's no audience, and the same, it's the same thing with character, I mean with integrity. Look, integrity, it chooses to do the right thing in spite of. That's right. It does what's right all the time. In spite of what's going on, I choose to do what's right. Listen, even if it's a, it affects my population.
popularity. Mm. I choose to do what's right. Even if it affects my reputation, guess what? I'm going to choose to do what's right. Absolutely. Even if it causes people to look at me sideways and talk about me, I'm still going to choose to do what? What's, what's right. right. What's right. Because why? I'm handcuffed by integrity. Come on. He got me by the cuffs. I can't do it. <laughs> my integrity, guess what? It's on the line. And guess what? Integrity, it always keeps its word. Absolutely. How, how many of y'all know some people who they can't keep their word? <laughs> now, don't you look at the person besides you. Like, you know, okay, I'll go on. But, but those are who are, who are of, in, of integrity, they always keep their word. That's right. Now, since God is our example, how many of God is our first and foremost example? That's Let me it. give you a for instance. Man, this is, this is powerful. When Joshua took over, Moses died, you know, and Joshua took over. Joshua, was, he was addressed, addressing the nation, talking to the Israelites, you know. And look what he said. It's, I think it's found in Joshua and it's in Numbers. He said this. You know in all of your hearts and in all of your mind, all of all the promises that he made to our forefathers, not one word fell to the ground. Boy. Every word came to pass. God kept every word that he promised to a dead man. That's right. He made those promises 400 years prior to the, to the Israelites making their exodus out, out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. The Bible said... God, he, he heard their sighs and he saw their crying uh, as far as how the taskmasters were treating the Israelites. And look what it said. He remembered his covenant promise that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The promises that he made 407 years prior. Mm. God kept these promises Integrity. to dead men. Integrity. How they gonna know? <laughs> you talk about integrity. Look, yeah. now, now, listen, integrity also abstain from lies and excuses no matter what. Reminds me of a true story. Can I tell you a story? Come on, brother. That was his boss, and his lawyer was in the office. Now, the phone rang. The phone started ringing, and, and the boss told the lawyer, which was his, his employee, say, look, if it's for me, tell him I'm not here. So... The phone rang, the lawyer picks the phone up. They asked for, the, for his boss. Guess what he did? Yes, he's here. Here you go. Now, the boss, man, he turned red as fire. But he had to get on the phone. <laughs> so when he finished the conversation, before he could get a word out, guess what the employee said? I'm not going to lie for you, and I'm not going to lie to you. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mess them up. The boss was so overwhelmed with what happened. Guess what he did? He gave him a raise, gave him a raise and put him over other lawyers. Hey. And then he requested that he would be his own personal lawyer. Yeah. Integrity does that. God will promote you because of your integrity. Now, I can't, one more thing. Now, brother, one more thing. Good. One more thing. Got 20 more minutes. Glory. One more thing. <laughs> <laughs> Integrity, how I many you know integrity also means honor? Yes. Honor. I'm telling you, they, they, they're like red beans and rice. They go together. They're like kinfolk. It means honor. And what does honor mean? Let's break it down. Come on with it. Honor means, that's right, honor means to hold in high esteem, which means to have a high level of respect Come on. for somebody. Come on. It also means to hold in high regard. It means to be highly considered over everybody else. Amen. And look what that's honor mean. It means weighty. Listen to me. Weighty. It, it, it means a person's words carry, carry weight. You know, it, it means weighty. You know, if I honor you, then I allow your, I allow your words to carry weight in my life. Amen. And if I allow your words to carry weight in my life, then I will allow your words to compel me to move in a certain direction. Because I honor you. I respect you. I hold you in high regards. So I allow your words to compel me to move. See, I, I honor my grandmother's word. Y'all remember my grandmother used to be here? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. If I didn't iron her, she'd make me iron her if she pull out that, <laughs> that, that belt. You know? And listen, I'm going to say this here and I'm going to shut it down. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, you read about Eli and his two sons. His son was tripping. This iron God, through they are, are priestly, are, are, are duties and things, you know, just disrespecting this iron God. And look what God told, told Eli. He told Eli, those who honor me, I'm going to honor them. Amen. Trying to tell you something. Those who honor me, I'm going to honor them. So listen, if you allow God, God's words to carry weight in your life and compel you to move, guess what God will do if you honor him? That's right. He will allow your words to carry weight in his life, in his life and it will compel him to move on your behalf. Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't catching. Oh, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, You'll catch yes. it when you hit the red light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Byron, that's, that's why Jesus said, do unto others as you have them do unto you. Right. He was, he was, yes. he would reciprocate. That's right. You know, if you have a high level of respect, you highly consider God, guess what he's going to do? We have a high level of respect for you, and he's going to consider you. If you allow God's word to carry weight in your life, he will allow your words to carry weight in his life. If you allow God's word to compel you to move, God will allow your words to compel him to move. That's it's it. an exchange. Amen. Y'all caught it? Yes. He said it. If you honor me, I'm going to honor you. That's it. Amen. But if you don't honor me, watch out. Look what the NIV says in Proverbs. People with integrity walk safely or securely. Right. But people who follow crooked paths, they will be exposed. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So honor means integrity. Integrity means honor. Amen. Please. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to shut it down right there. That's good. God bless you. That's good. Great. Great. You know, I like Proverbs uh, chapter 20, verse 7. It says the godly will walk with integrity. Blessed are their children who follow them. Now, if there is a, a, a thought in my head that I can live an exemplary life of Christ to my children, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. If I can walk and talk, but I fall short every day. Romans 3.23 says we all fall short. And um, doing this study on integrity, it really made me self-evaluate areas of my life. Because I say, oh yeah, I'm a I'm a pretty a pretty good dude, man. I I, I use integrity all the time, and and what are some characteristics of integrity? Is honesty, truthfulness. You're upright. You're reliable. Yes. You're trustworthy. Mm -hmm. You know, when you tell somebody you're going to do something, they know that you're going to do everything in your power to make it come to pass. That's that's what integrity is. Mm -hmm. And and through this study, like so many. Um, Opportunities. We always, God always gives us an opportunity to exercise our integrity. How about, for example, you're in a self checkout at Walmart, okay? Yeah. You're in a self checkout at Walmart. Listen, I get integrity checked on this all yeah. the time. Yeah. And you're scanning. Doop, doop. And you got something and the line's long, like you said, you said earlier about the line being long. And you're like, man, I can't wait to get out of here. And you're so ready just to scan this stuff. And then you got the people that's getting paid to check you out standing over like this playing on their phone. That's what gets me. And I got to check out my own groceries and bag my own groceries. You know, I, I'm working on that one. Lord, help me there. So anyway, um, and then you get that, that avocado or that orange or that lemon or that, that 59 cent, whatever it is, and it will not ring up. How many times have you thought about putting that in your bag without ringing it up? Come on, let's be honest. I think about it all the time and I'm like, but this Set it on the shelf. This is not it's worth it. making you displeased with me, Lord. Yeah. So I call for help. What, are the, what is the first thing they do when they come over there? They try to ring it up too. <laughs> it's like, you want to say, I tried that 15 times already if you weren't watching me. And uh, that, that's, just, that's just a little funny. Uh, that's an example. 
But I know, and, and sometimes I will literally, I'll scan something, put it in a bag, and I'll go back to the screen and make sure I scanned it because that's the last thing I want is to be labeled as a thief or labeled as someone with no integrity over a, a, a 79 cent avocado or something like that. You know what I mean? Because there was a time in my life, even when I was a slime ball, I still had a little bit of integrity. You know, I, I wouldn't do certain things because my father, my earthly father, did the best he could with what he had. He didn't, they didn't put the Jesus in me that I needed, but, but they did the best they could with what they had. And I'm very grateful and thankful for that because before I knew Christ, that's what got me through life um, as, a, as a pretty decent person. We'll, we'll not sustain you, will not work, will not get you into heaven. You got to have Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. And uh, the, the second thing you said something about uh, the story, the story about the boss. I ran a car lot on Florida Boulevard in Baton Rouge for eight years. Now, you want to talk about two things that's hard. This was before I was a Christian, but I think back now, being a landlord and, and possibly being a car salesman, that's probably two of the hardest jobs for a Christian to have to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because number one, like just people... You know, you want to give grace, you want to give mercy, and people can't pay their bills, and people tear your house up, and people never keep their promises and never do what they say. It's really, really hard to be a man of God and and, and be in, in a position of a landlord. It really is, but but God always comes through. He's faithful. There's rules, there's regulations, there's, there's principles that have to be met in our life as well in the Bible. And if you don't meet them, you have to suffer and pay the consequences. That's, that's one of the realizations that I had to come to. But the other one about the car lot, man, I wasn't saved. I knew there was a God only because people talked about it. I knew there was a heaven and a hell because people talked about it. But um, even then, like I said, I was a pretty good old boy. I could not lie to save my life to somebody I was selling a car to. Mm. They're like, bro, why you didn't have to do the, 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 the salesman? Because I was kind of like the manager over the operation. And the salesman would bring them, the, the, the customers into my office and, you know, got a desk right here and they're sitting right there. And this dude is promising them an oil change, AC, <laughs> rotating tires. I mean, he is promising these people things that I know yeah. the guy sitting behind that brick wall is not going to do. Yeah. He is not going to do. And I'm sitting there like, Dude, stop, stop. And he's just, I mean, he's flowing. He, this dude, he used to say, I could sell ice to an Eskimo. He said, I'd sell you, I'd get, sell you an empty shoebox and you get down the road and you'd still be thinking about what he said and you wouldn't open it until you got down the road and know he sold you an empty shoebox. But the point I'm getting at is he told me one day, he said, I'm going to have to hire somebody that could sell cars. I said, no, you're going to have to hire somebody that can lie. Because when you can lie, you have no integrity. Amen. Like yeah. anything? Hey, back to the back to the Walmart and, and that too. Luke sixteen ten, you brought it up at the last panel. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust in much. It's really no small you know, we gotta be faithful in the small things. Also, you know, people think, oh, that ain't nothing. That ain't that's what right. it is. Compromise. That's, where, that, that's where, where we can build our integrity. That's a compromise. You know, in Proverbs 11:3, the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed in the NIV by their duplicity. Now, I looked up duplicity as deceitfulness, double dealing, and double minded. Cool. People make excuses or we try to, you know, if, if I find a, a wallet that ain't mine, I can, I can reason away in, in how I can keep that. <laughs> even, you know, so people are good at doing that when we should bring it back. That's we right. should even, you know, if you went to the if you went to St. Joseph, uh, the store, and you bought a jacket and it had a wallet in there and there was a thousand dollars in it. Well, one, that's that's a that's a, a place of a, a charitable place. Bring it back. They may can find the owner, but if not, hey, the money's charity. It wasn't yours anyway. That's right. You know, so I think that's what that kind of means. And, and double-minded, and, and James 1, 8, the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Yes. So, I mean, all that just ties together, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's just don't let the little stuff get me. Man. <laughs> yes, and then if you want the full blessing of God, all his promises are yea and amen. We have to learn how to walk in integrity. That means we have to develop that intimate relationship with the word of God. And the word of God is Jesus. 
Because it was the word that was transformed into a human and went to the cross and died for us. And that's why he said, put him in remembrance of his words. Now, he's the word, but he want to know, and we know the word too, to remind him. He said, come, let us reason together. Sit down and talk your problem over with him. So we have to continue to keep that relationship, an intimate relationship with him. We have to be listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying. If the Holy Spirit said, don't say that, or don't do that, or go in this direction, or that re direction, if you don't, disobedience can cost you your life. So if you really want the full benefit of the word of God, all of his promises, and your prayers to be answered, you have to walk in a spirit of integrity. Mm. Honesty, trusting the Lord with everything within you, leaning not to your own understanding, because your own understanding can cause chaos in yes, your life. Absolutely. So we have to learn how to trust and depend on Jesus, that solid rock. When the storm comes, the rock won't move. He's right there waiting on us with open arms. And you know what I thank God for? Thank God we under this new covenant. We don't have to wait on a priest to go yeah. to the Lord for us. Amen. We can go anytime. Whenever you call him up, you have to say, yeah. I'll, call you, I'll call you back later. The line is busy. <laughs> He's always open and waiting on us. He's there for us. He's let us he let us know. I am that rock. And I love you. That's why he died on the cross for us. Therefore, so we can walk in a spirit of integrity. And the choices that we make can determine whether we are walking in integrity or not. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Yes. He's there. Um, you know, you say like your thoughts, your mind. What we think about. I love um, Philippians 4 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. If we think about these things, that everything we do say, Is what I'm doing honorable? Is what I'm doing lovely in the eyes of the Lord? Is what I'm doing pure? This is a little guideline that we can we can self-check. We can do a checklist and see. And if it doesn't line up with this, of course, it's not walking with integrity. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it's definitely not integrity. And and we have the Holy Spirit. I used to think it was a conscience, but now I know it's conviction. <laughs> I used to do I used to do some dirty stuff when I was a bad little boy. And um, like stealing from the store, you know, and and I would get like this. It would feel like spinning, you know, like when you go over a hill real fast. And that was before I knew anything about God and about the Holy Spirit and your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. And once I came to Christ, I realized that that was the Holy Spirit. He was so upset with me that he was just tossing and turning and spinning because of what I was doing was shameful to the Lord. Yeah, it was conviction. So not a, I, don't, I don't believe about a conscience. I think it's, it's conviction of the Holy Spirit, conviction of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. You got something, Brother Ron? I remember when uh, I was going to school in Oklahoma, and uh, I was I was I used to teach a Bible study at the uh, at one of the, uh, the the projects in Tulsa. You know, in Oklahoma, Tulsa's like South Baton Rouge and Baton, in, uh, South the South in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't go to the bottom. Don't go to the South. Yeah. So. So Every North day. Tulsa was like that. In Tulsa, North Tulsa was like that. Don't go to North Tulsa. They crazy up there, you know. So, so I, used, I used to do a Bible study. Man, the presence and power of God was falling in the Bible study. Can you believe that? I'm talking about tangible. And I'm, just, I'm not just saying that loosely. It literally happened. So one day, uh, something came up, and I had to make a choice. Integrity is a choice. Whether I go with them or I go and do the Bible study. Now, my flesh wanted to go. I think we were supposed to go to the zoo. But I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on and do the Bible study. So I went and did the Bible study. And we went, look, we went to a car lot to, uh, to go look at some cars. And this car lot, they, have a, they had a little raffling going on. You know, this big old 
wire thing, you know. Uh, spinning. You're spinning, yeah. and you got nothing but names in it. So, man, I was like, well, glory to God, why not? So I put my name in there. Guess whose name they put? Come on, man. Come on. I know God did that just because of my integrity. Amen. My loyalness to serve in him. Come on. Come on. You know, because I was doing the stutter, but I was doing yeah. it wholeheartedly as unto who? Unto the Lord, not unto man. And, 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 and I'm not, not trying to get you uh, to just think about things, you the know benefits, what I'm saying? Thank yeah. God for things. Yeah. You know, as long as we don't have a lot of things to have us. But I'm just telling you one of the rewards of just being loyal. And those of you who have kids, the Bible says train up you take your word. Yes, a yes. child. That's the Lord, because I was going to say that. And the way that they should go, so when they grow up, they will not depart from that. Or they might go left, but they go. But I bet you, they coming back. Amen, amen. The scriptures will not let you down. They coming back. Amen. So you should download those morals and principles in your children while they are young. Yes. We are the first teachers, our parents, right? Yes. Before they jump off the porch and enter the streets, I call it Streets University, and the university has some cold-blooded instructors out there. Mm. Because if you don't teach your kids, somebody else will. Amen. Amen. So now is the time when you train them up. My my mother, man, she used to love ivory plants. She'd take one small plant, and before you know it. That plant done grew all over the house. And you looking for the for the for the root? A little bit of plant. How can that be? But she would tie little things around it to train it to where she wanted to go. She would tie. That's how we ought to do with our little kids. Some of y'all looking at me like I'm talking. I ain't talking right. It's tight, but you know it's right. Amen, amen, amen. You know it's right. It's your job to train them up because if you don't, Pookie and Toby will. That's right. <laughs> Pookie and Toby waiting on them. So you start right here. So when they grow up and when they do leave the nest, you sit back and watch your work. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 Think about that. Praise the Lord. All right, man. Is that some good stuff, you guys? Amen. 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 We're going to go ahead and close. Nobody's got anything? All right, Father God, Lord, we just thank you. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises, and we thank you for who you are. Lord, you've already done enough. You did enough at that cross, Father God. Even if you don't ever do another thing for us, Lord, we are so grateful. We are so thankful, Lord, that we're going to serve you for the rest of our life, God, and even after. Lord, we pray that you would help us to walk in the spirit of integrity, God. We pray that that you would put the principles into us, Father God, that you'd help us to be the men and women of God that you have called and created us to be, Lord, that you would continue to send the Holy Spirit to mold us and sculpt us and shape us into those men and women of God that you called us to be, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity, for the time that we've had just to fellowship and just to, to dwell in your presence, God, and just to share the, the little bit that you put on our heart, Father, and we just ask that there be safe travel and mercies for everyone on their way home. God, we just want to thank all of those online watching, and we just ask that you bless the rest of this night, Father God. Let us all go home and, and get a good night's sleep and wake up refreshed and ready to take on the day tomorrow, Father God, and it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. You can join our social media community, watch full broadcasts, sign up for our daily devotional, and much more at miracleplace.org. 